The Keeper of Wild Words, written by Brooke Smith, illustrated by Madeline Kloper. The Keeper of Wild Words. At the end of a long cinder lane, surrounded by meadows and pine trees and sky that wrapped around and back again, Brooke ran up to her grandmother's door, swung it open, and she belonged. Mimi, I'm here. Brooke called her grandmother Mimi. She wasn't just a grandmother. She was a grand friend. Mimi had been waiting. She'd been sitting at her desk all day, distracted by a hummingbird, a wasp's nest, a red-tailed hawk hovering overhead. Mimi was a writer. She wove words into everything, everything that mattered. Brooke was so excited to be visiting. She needed Mimi's help. Tomorrow was the first day of school and Brooke had nothing for show and tell. Her summer had been wonderful, but she didn't have one special thing to share that her friends would always remember. But today, Mimi needed Brooke's help too. She had something important to ask her. I'm afraid some of my favorite words are disappearing. Some of the wild words that I've known and loved my whole life. How do words disappear, Brooke wondered. Words disappear if we don't share them when we talk, if we don't write them in our stories, if we don't read them in our books. If we don't use words, they can be forgotten. And if they're forgotten, they disappear. I need someone to keep them safe, she continued, to help remember. I need you to be my keeper, the keeper of the wild words. Can I wear a crown, Brooke asked. No, Mimi laughed. The keeper doesn't need a crown. She just needs to keep her eyes wide open and be ready to see and hear and feel all the wild words. <laughs> Do you want to be the keeper of the wild words? <gasps> Maybe one day, yes! <laughs> the keeper doesn't need a crown. She just needs to keep her eyes wide open and be ready to see and hear and feel all the wild words. That way she'll always remember them. Look! Acorn, apricot, beaver, blackberry, buttercup, dandelion, doe, drake, fern, lavender, minnow, mint, monarch, poppy, porcupine, starling, violet, willow, wren. From sun up to sundown, we'll walk and run and walk again. Sit and wait, listen and touch, until we find every word on the list, said Mimi or every word on the list finds us. I'm ready, said Brooke, and they were off. And sure enough, as soon as they stepped into the morning, wild words were waiting. A wren sang a good morning song, a little brown bird with a voice like an angel, sitting up high, looking down, just waiting to say hello to the world. Bunches of violets spread underfoot. Sweet perfume filled the air, almost making Brooke dizzy. Their little purple faces smiled, inviting the day to begin. Poppies in the corner of the yard suddenly popped open, paper petals reaching to the sun. And bushes filled with blackberries, just like the ones Brooke had eaten for breakfast. Hundreds still waiting to be picked and enjoyed for dessert. Do wild words dance like this every morning? Along the way, Brooke picked up an acorn that fell from a mighty oak. Big towering oak tree, little nut with a tiny brown hat, smooth round shell. She put it in her pocket to remember. Up ahead they saw light reflected in a round mirror of water, the pond. When Brooke scooped up a handful of water, silver minnows swam circles in her palm, now a pool. Whoever knew 
she could hold the wild. Mm. Then splash, silence broken. A beaver jumped in, and then under he went, swimming towards his den, climbing up on the other side of the pond, and then disappearing from view. It's sure busy around here, Brooke said. Always, Mimi answered. Bushels of mint surrounded the pond. Mimi picked stems and rubbed the leaves in her fingers. Brooke picked a leaf and put it in her mouth. Fresh, sweet, tangy. From the ground, from the earth, she could taste the wild. Then one last visitor waddled by. Green velvet head, bright yellow beak. Mr. Drake, Papa Duck, running. Quack, run. Lift off. Wings out. There he goes. Where next? The meadow. Just follow the trail cut deep in the tall grass. Brooke ran ahead. So free, so free, so free. A butterfly, a monarch, diving in the breeze. Now you are just like me. Bright buttercups welcomed them. Yellow petals glistening in the sun a wild carpet of light and beauty. Quick, make a wish, said Mimi, holding out a dandelion, fairy dust sitting on a stem. Blow on it and the seeds will fly, your tiny wishes in the air. At the top of the meadow stood an old willow tree. The shade of the willow was like a dear friend. Mimi had known this tree forever. What a perfect place to have lunch, Mimi said. She took out small sandwiches and apricots picked from her yard. Round, fuzzy fruit, sweet as could be, the juice dripping with every bite. Rows of lavender lined the field below, filling the air with a magic perfume. Just then, overhead, Brooke could not believe her eyes. There's a bird cloud flying above us. Oh my, Mimi said, the starlings are back. Such an amazing wonder. Thousands of birds swooped, darted, and turned, somehow always staying connected. Then they floated away as mysteriously as they came. Finally, they wandered over to the dense, dark woods. Brooke had always been a little afraid of the forest, but now part of her was wild, and she couldn't wait. A light rain started to fall, sudden summer shower. The rain made the smells of the forest come alive and all the plants glisten. The ferns with their magnificent green feathered leaves curled up and then spread out like a fan for everyone to notice. What else do you see, Mimi asked. Brooke looked across the forest floor and sure enough, nestled in the needles was a doe. A deer curled up like the fern, fast asleep in the shadows. Peace and quiet, walk slowly by, we'll let her be. In the woods, things appear around corners, tucked deep. Ahead, they heard a rustling. Stop, Mimi said. Walk back slowly towards me. Right then, a porcupine popped out and ran up a tree. Porcupines, if they're scared, will let their quills fly. Surprises abound in the wild. Mimi had one other surprise. You know, my favorite wild word is not on the list, she said. It's standing right in front of me. A gurgling sound was coming from a clearing, light flickering on a glassy surface. It was a small stream, a brook, dancing, sparkling, singing. It knew exactly where it was going. Joyful thread of water cutting through the trees. The last wild word is you, Mimi said. You were named after this tiny stream that your mother always cherished. One could only imagine such a perfect name for the keeper of wild words. Mimi, I never told you what I needed help with, said Brooke. What is it, Mimi said. I need something special for show and tell tomorrow. And now I have it. The night sky would soon be painted, stars gleaming overhead a beautiful wild curtain closing on the day. Mimi's wild words were safe. They were shared and remembered, understood, deeply loved. 
When the wild wraps around you, it stays forever in your heart. Then this is an author's note. This book was inspired by an article I read that astounded me. The Oxford Junior Dictionary removed over 100 natural words from its pages. They no longer felt these words had relevance for today's children. They were replaced by words such as analog, cautionary tale, chat room, conflict, creep, database, drought, mp3 player, negotiate, vandalism, voicemail. At first I was angry, then disillusioned, and ultimately very sad. But the beauty of being a writer is that you can create a world that you want to see. I decided to write a book where some of these lost wild words would be celebrated and recognized beyond the pages of the dictionary, to perhaps shed light on what is transpiring by bringing them to life and have children and their parents be aware of how much we need to sustain the language of the natural world. I hope I've done that with this book. I hope every one of us will be keepers of wild words. I cannot imagine a world without these beautiful words in it. With love, Brooke. You can be a keeper too. Your wild words will stay safe inside this envelope. Now, at home, you don't have this book, or maybe you do, but assuming you don't have this book, you can get any envelope and just write wild words on the cover, like the words wild words, and then any wild words that you collect out in nature, you can write the word, draw a picture of it, maybe write a little bit about what it is, and tuck it in your envelope so that you are a keeper of wild words too.